Bob here. I hope that you're having a fantastic day. As we continue in our God's Word for you today series, we're going to pick up in Romans chapter 8, starting at verse 1. Apostle Paul has been building this argumentation that we are not capable of earning our salvation, that we are not capable of doing everything required for us to be saved, but rather we are saved by grace through faith through Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter whether Jew or Gentile, no one could keep the law and therefore all receive and should receive condemnation. But grace be from God that we receive salvation through Jesus Christ. Even while we were enemies, God still reconciled us to himself through the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. And today as we dive into our text, we're going to be in Romans chapter 8, starting at verse 1, going to verse 11. The Apostle Paul is going to drive this beautiful truth home. Join with me there. If you don't have your Bible, please feel free to pause it, go grab it, and come back so that you could be in this passage with me this morning as we go about our study. Romans chapter 8, starting at verse 1. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because the law of spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do since it was weakened by the flesh, God did. He condemned sin in the flesh by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh as a sin offering in order that the law's requirement would be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh have their mind set on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit have their mind set on the things of the Spirit. Now the mindset of the flesh is death, but the mindset of the Spirit is life and peace. The mindset of the flesh is hostile to God because it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it is unable to do so. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God lives in you, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him. Now if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you, then he who raised Christ from the dead will also bring your mortal bodies to life through his Spirit who lives in you. Paul opens up this chapter with one of the most beautiful encouragements that you and I will ever receive. That encouragement is that if we are in Jesus Christ, there is now no condemnation. Our previous ways of walking, our previous lives, our sin that we walked so easily entangled in, is no longer held against, the, against us because we have been purchased and we've been redeemed through the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And as you and I continue to seek Christ and walk in the newness of life, there is so much hope and joy because we are set free from the bondage of sin and decay. We are set free from death. We are set free from the law. We are set free of that which produces no fruit so that we may produce good fruit. We've been grafted into the beautiful vine of the spiritual Israel. And the thing that Paul wants us to understand, church, in these first two verses, is that we couldn't do that on our own. It is because of Christ that we've been set free. Paul goes on to build this dichotomy of the mind that is set on the flesh versus the mind that is set on the spirit. And Paul makes it very adamantly clear that the mind that is set on the flesh is not capable of pleasing God. No, it will look to its own fleshly desires. It is hostile to God. It will not surrender. It will not give in. It will not do the things of which the spirit is called to do because it cannot do so. You see, when we are lost in our sins, church, we are incapable of pleasing God. No matter how hard we may try, no matter how righteous or good we think we may be, the truth is we are dead in our trespasses, incapable of pleasing the Holy Father who is in heaven. Because when we are focused on our minds, when we are focused on our flesh in our mind, all we can do is satisfy our own cravings, our own sinful desires. Because no matter how hard we try, no matter how good we may think we are, we will still sin. And so when our mind is focused on the flesh, we cannot please God. Paul's warning here is for Christians though, for those who have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ, for those who have been set free from the law of sin and death, who have been reconciled to God through the blood of the Savior Jesus Christ. His warning to us is that we cannot continue to set our minds on the things of the flesh. No church, we must set our minds on the things above. We must set our mind on the things of the Spirit. Paul has already established that there, there's this battle that takes place inside of all of us. 
as our spirit wants to to go along with the Holy Spirit to live a life that is holy and pleasing to God but our flesh our flesh gives in to temptation our flesh violates God's statutes our flesh continues to pursue the things in which we should not and we have to be disciplined to ensure that we are walking in faith that we are walking in Christ we have to to set our minds on the things that are above, as the Apostle Paul will say in his letter to the church in Colossae. Because the mind that is set on the things of the flesh, the mind that seeks to gratify the sinful desires and passions of the heart, only is hostile to God. It, in effect, as the writer of Hebrews will say, it re-crucifies the Son of God. When we have tasted the heavenly gift, the joy of salvation in Jesus Christ, and we continue to push forward and live in sin, we reject that grace that we have received. We do not show ourselves truly transformed and converted by the power of the Holy Spirit. Spirit, We do not show ourselves to be within keeping of the fruit of repentance. No, we show ourselves to be blasphemous, hypocritical, slanders of God, that which the world does. Notice what Paul says. Those who live according to the flesh in verse 5, have their minds set on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit have their minds set on the things of the Spirit. Now the mindset of the flesh is death, but the mindset of the Spirit is life and peace. The mindset of the flesh is hostile to God because it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it is unable to do so. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Here's the truth. When we accept Jesus Christ as our, Lord, as our Lord and Savior, and we accept Him into our hearts, but we continue to go on and we continue to live our lives in blatant and flamboyant sin, violating the grace that we have received in Jesus Christ, we show ourselves not to be followers of Christ. We show ourselves unable to please God. But I think perhaps worse yet is we show ourselves to be the type of people that spit in God's face and return His mercy and His grace for revile. We show ourselves to be hostile to God. And there are people within the church that do this. There are people within the church that say they have called on the name of Christ, but there's no regeneration. There's no hope. There's no grace in their life. There's no transformation by the power of the Word and by the power of the Holy Spirit. There's no washing of the Word because they don't care. They bought it into this deception by Satan that because they called on the name of Jesus Christ, they are saved. And they continue to continue to walk in whatever sin they desire, whatever makes them feel good, because at some point, at some time, they said some silly little prayer. But there was no actual surrendering to the Christ. There was no actual surrendering to the Holy Spirit. There was no actual washing of the Word. There was no actual repentance of transgression. There was no actual confession of Jesus as Lord and Savior. You see, our world loves the idea of having a savior, someone to save themselves from their sin, if they would acknowledge their sin. But the idea of having a Lord is a far, far more difficult concept for our society. Because we like to be in control. We like to have the power. But the fact is, when we desire to be in control, we desire to sit on the throne of our life. We have a mindset that is of the flesh and it is hostile to God. Perhaps some of you who are hearing this message, maybe this is an area where you need to repent. Church, it's not too late. And I have to think, I agree with the Apostle Paul, that for the most people in the church, for most people that have called on the name of Christ, verse 11 is the truth. And if the Spirit of him who raised you from Jesus Christ lives in you, then he also raised you from the dead. He will also bring your mortal bodies to life through his spirit who lives in you. For those of us who our mindset is on the flesh, for those of us who walk with Christ, there is the hope of eternal life. And there is the hope of the newness of the resurrection. I know that there are some that are falling down a dark path. I know that there are some who are not walking with Christ. But as the Apostle Paul says, church, we are, however, are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God lives in you. If anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him. So church, the question I have for you this morning is, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior?
Are you walking in the newness of life? Does the Spirit of God live in you? Because if it does, you have the hope of a newness of life. You have the hope of peace with God. And above all, sum everything up. For those of us who are in Christ Jesus, as the Apostle Paul says in Romans chapter 8, verse 1, there is now no condemnation. Because in Christ, we are the righteousness of God. We'll see you back here on Friday. God bless. Have a great day.